Hello, I'm Kamla. My guests today are two filmmakers, Darren Foster and Christina Constantini. We are going to talk to them about their love letter of a film called Science Fair. The film won the Audience Award at the 2018 Sundance Film Festival. Here's a clip from the film and then our interview with Darren Foster and Christina Constantini. If you're there just to win the prize, you're missing the point of Science Fair. You enter into this new kind of world I didn't even know kind of existed. It's one of the best weeks of my life, like every time I go there. Ela tem um sonho realmente de sair, de crescer. Eu acredito que se eles vêm lá, as portas talvez vão se abrir. I'm going to be so proud when one of my kids win a Nobel Prize, because they will. It's so simple. Finalists from 78 countries, regions, and territories around the world. You can think of it as the Olympics of Science Fair. We ain't going nowhere to the end of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the most impressive. I plan on shaking the planet until I'm convalescent. If I could just achieve and not just me, but like anybody else is going to create what only I can so simple. Simple as one, two, three. Winning will change your life in ways that you don't even comprehend. So welcome to San Francisco. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Uh, it's not very common that you see a film about science fair. There have been films about spelling bee, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and this was very interesting. How did the idea come to do a film about this very geeky world? <laughs> this, <laughs> Go ahead, Darren. The film was many, <laughs> in many ways, uh, about 13 years in the making because uh, Christina here actually was a participant. Right, I was a science fair kid in high school and it totally changed my life and it um, totally opened up the world to me. Um, but it, I also became obsessed with this little world and um, even from a young age I thought, wow, there really should be a documentary about these kids. They're, they're inspiring and they're you know doing amazing levels of research, um, but they're also really quirky, funny, intense uh, nerds, and they're really watchable, and I, that stuck with me from a young age, and then finally when I was making documentaries, we made a, a documentary together that was much different in subject matter. It was about the opiate uh, epidemic, but um, I pitched Darren on this idea, and he understood it right away, and uh, so we set off on this journey to make a documentary about this happy, weird little world. Why did the idea stick? Um, I mean, when Christina first proposed the idea to me, like the t story she would tell me about the science fair wasn't about the amazing science that was being done. It was about you know the dance at the science fair uh, and the that was surprising. <laughs> the dance. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a great dance, uh, and all these other amazing little you know uh, anecdotes about the kids that she met, and um, I just fell in love with the way that she told the, you know t was relating the story to me, and I knew there was something more than just you know kids doing science. There was um, a whole sort of subculture there that I thought was interesting, and uh, you mentioned you know spelling bee doc. Spellbound was a you know I'm a huge fan of that documentary, and I sort of saw saw the uh, parallels there, and um, I got really excited about it. So, so this is a fascinating film, and it was so interesting and inspiring to see nine kids, you know, and you follow nine kids, and then there's that teacher. Yes. So Dr. McCalla, um, we found her, she lives in Long Island, and we knew we wanted to follow, we thought we wanted to follow all students. Um, and I started doing research about some of the, you know, the best teams in the world, and hers kept coming up over at Jericho High School as one of the best science fair programs in the world. And then I watched a few news clips of her, and I was, I was immediately captivated. And so we went to Long Island, and we're kept looking for one of her students to cast, and they're all very lovely, but the camera kept gravitating towards Dr. McCullough, and I think... The camera <laughs> kept gravitating. <laughs> and I mean, she is, she is amazing, and especially at the fair itself, um, she, you could tell she was really in her element, and we decided at that moment, at the very end of our sh uh, filming, that we would, uh, that she would be the character, um, because she was just so dynamic as you as you pointed out. <laughs> she is. She's a force <laughs> of nature, as you point out. Definitely. You know? I mean, yeah, I mean, I think, as Christina said, you know, the camera just always gravitated towards her. And <laughs> I think there was the people behind the camera. <laughs> 
<laughs> we all definitely. Yeah, I mean, we, we love that's her. That's not yeah. a self-driving camera. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, we all love Dr. McCollum. We're totally captivated by her. So yes, I say the camera, but it's actually us. Oh, so we love Dr. McCollum. <laughs> but, and she's devoted her life to teaching. Yeah, I mean, and we thought that was a really important perspective to bring to the film, you know, in retrospect. You know, we, we uh, as Christina said, you know, we definitely thought that this was going to be a film about kids. Um, and then once we made the decision to include Dr. McCullough, it just added this another layer to the film that um, I think has made the film so much better. Um, and she has. She's dedicated her life to uh, the science fairs and preparing her kids. And she's, uh, she's, she's amazing. And the kids in her school uh, are mostly from outside the country. Yeah or, yeah, or many of them are immigrants or immigrants' children. And so first generation yeah. or new immigrants. From Asia. Yeah, from Asia. And, and so that must have been an interesting, and she points out that she herself comes right. from such a background. Right, yeah. Her parents were from Jamaica. Yeah, I mean, it's impossible to make a film about the science fair and not deal with issues of immigration. I mean, so many of the contributions that have been made to science in this country have come from immigrants. Um, so there's a very long legacy of just, you know, immigration um, contributing to scientific knowledge and breakthroughs. Um, and you see that to this day. Um, that, you know, the kids, you know, Dr. McCullough identifies with these kids because she is the child of an immigrant, of immigrants herself. And, um, you know, she says in the film that I think they just have something to prove and they you know they realize that they have a real opportunity that maybe their parents you know have sacrificed for and they feel a bit of a debt uh, to their parents so they work harder and I think uh, it's yeah for us it was really special to be able to include that mm. and so she's the the teacher but the rest of the characters are nine students right. who fight who fight in a nice way mm -hmm. why for a place right. to go to that ultimate science fair which is organized by Intel yes. That's right. and what is that science fair called it's called the International Science and Engineering Fair or ICEF and you went to that? I went th to that for two years in a row. And is it always held in Los Angeles? No, it changes cities and now it's held in either Pittsburgh, Phoenix or Los Angeles and it rotates between those three. Okay. So it is their journey to this international fair where the ultimate prize is 75000 Yeah. And then the rest of them get Right. For their category, they get recognition. Yeah, yeah, I mean, for many of the kids, the prize is just getting to ISEF. It's, uh, you know, it's the Olympics of science fairs. There's 1,700 kids from 78 different countries, and they really put on a big show for the kids and really celebrate science in an amazing way. These kids are treated like rock stars for a week. Uh, and it's and then they have a rocking party. <laughs> and they have yeah. a huge rocking party. Yeah, they have a great time. I, I mean, the kids don't sleep. They're either, you know, partying or uh, preparing for uh, their big, you know, uh, judging day. And so uh, it's a exhausting week for them. And for you too. It's, for us it was very exhausting, <laughs> yeah. You're, you're tracking these nine kids. Yeah. Exactly. So, so you have an interesting mix of kids. Um, tell me why you chose uh, that school in Kentucky, which is very well known. So you said you did your homework, so mm -hmm. Kentucky is one. Right, that's right. So They're all very intense in that school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we know we, we wanted kind of um, a diversity of experience. I remember as a science fair kid, there being those kids from the best schools in the world, the Yankees of science fair, and then there were kids from like very uh, under-resourced backgrounds like uh, Milena and Gabrielle from Brazil. They're from a tiny, poor town in the middle of the interior of Brazil, and they have no resources. Um, Kashfia, who has no mentor, aside that's from the, the football coach, <laughs> that's right. So we wanted to really capture that range of experience and um, DuPont Manual, which is in Louisville, just like Jericho, is one of the best teams in the world and, and one of the most competitive uh, qualifying fairs. So we, we wanted to show that intensity of their qualifying fair. Uh, it's very hard to get at the science fair from DuPont Manual High School. So, um, and as you can see, it's, it's cutthroat um, and uh, I, we find that energy very fun to watch yeah yeah so dupont anjali was very intense and and she's uber competitive yeah right. <laughs> so she represents the school's uh, um, sense or force in some way yeah i mean I, I you know i think even at dupont there's a diversity of kids and um and their approach to science but anjali um, I think, you know, is a very confident young woman and she knows what she wants and she knows what she wants to accomplish and um, obviously she's a bit of a, a prodigy as well. She's very smart. And uh, very young. And she's very young. 14 when she's competing. Yeah. Um, is that very young? Yeah. She's yeah. a, you know, she, what, she got a perfect score on her SAT, ACT, ACT. Um, 
before she was in high school. So yeah. she's a brilliant, brilliant child. Yeah. So she's one end of the spectrum. Yeah. Yes. At the other end of the spectrum is somebody like Robbie right. from West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was so laid back. I thought right. he was from California <laughs> right. with a shirt and, you know. So how did you discover Robbie and tell us about Robbie? Robbie's fantastic. We were drawn to Robbie. Uh, the camera because, was not drawn? Not the camera <laughs> and us. For, bec specifically because he did not fit into the traditional academic framework. He did not care about school at all. Um, well, and he was almost failing his math. Yeah, yeah, when we met him, he was failing out of his math class. The year we met him, he was al nearly failing out of his math class, and he was at the International Science Fair with a number theory project, which we loved that irony of just, you know, not caring at all about schoolwork, but really loving mathematics on the side. So um, he was, he's just passionate and about And his learning. teacher was not very encouraging. No, no. Right? No, she, she wanted him to follow the path. She wanted right. him to do, do well in class. Yeah, and she didn't care about looking into number theory or helping him and that drives Dr. McCullough insane because that is the exact opposite <laughs> approach to teaching that Dr. McCullough has. Okay. So, um, <laughs> yeah. so, so, so you found, you discovered Robbie. Yeah, yeah. I mean by pure luck we, we uh, went to Scout in 2016 at the uh, in ISEP just looking for some kids and we ran into Robbie and, and I mean we were immediately charmed by him because he is exactly who he is on, on camera. Um, he's just... He's chatty and <laughs> sweet and funny. And, and has an amazing perspective. He, and like, great one-liners. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's a really funny kid. Yeah. yeah. And, and so among all the nine kids, He's the outlier because he's brilliant, and now he's an intern in, in some Silicon Valley company. We have some more updates since then. He's now actually, he, he still can't get into college, but he's actually- Why? Not, Why can't he? Oh, he doesn't have the grades. Uh, <laughs> you know, he, so Isn't he, that ironical? It's ironic, but he's mm -hmm. more ironic is that he's actually lecturing at Stanford. He can't get into Stanford, but he's lecturing there. So uh, He's lecturing at Stanford, but he can't study at no, Stanford? No, he can't get in. He can't. <laughs> he's doing guest lectures, he works in a research lab, and he's doing really amazing artwork now that's like on the cover of Bloomberg Business Week. He has shows in Paris. He's doing really well, um, but he still can't get into college, which to me embodies, you know, this idea that like college isn't the only way to be smart, and oftentimes it stifles creativity and stifles brilliant minds like Robbie. So I'm not sure he needs college. I think he'll be okay. Yeah. Are you puzzled by what has happened? That here is this brilliant kid. You know, he's demonstrated right. over and above what you can do in class with his number theory, and yet he's having a hard time. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, one of the things that we wanted to show in the film is that there are kids that learn and approach learning in different ways, and Robbie obviously is, you know, an example of that. He doesn't, uh, you know, learn uh, by doing the, his coursework. He learns by doing independent study and just following his own curiosity, uh, and obviously by doing that he's accomplishing amazing things. Um, and so, you know, the, the, the beauty of science fair is like a lot of these kids get to follow the passions and, and, and do the kind of, you know, research independently that they would never be able to do in a typical science class. Um, so, you know, in that way, I think science fair is really important for a lot of kids. Um, but at the same time, you know, I think we need to be more open-minded about how we're educating children because they have a, access to information that, you know, we didn't have them growing up. Um, and they can, uh, you know, pursue a lot of things that uh, are outside the coursework. Um, so I think we just need to be a bit more flexible and open-minded about how kids are learning these days. Yeah, and I didn't know where you were going with the Robbie story because you show him <laughs> first in the recycling center. <laughs> and he's, I'm like, why are they showing, is, is he a recycler? You know, is this kid very poor? And then you show him in his room, you know, he's got all these cards and he's very deeply yeah. interested in machine learning. Yeah. How inspired were you personally by Robbie? I mean, I was inspired. Yeah, he's amazing. I think I think he reminds us all the time that there is not one path to um, doing the things you love, and that you know, just because people say this is the way it's supposed to be done, and you, right. you don't always have to do it that way. And so, uh, yeah, I love his his. He has a rebellious spirit too. He but loves, in a sweet kind of a in way. A sweet yes. way. Yeah, yeah. He's yes, he's uh, mischievous, but he's very sweet. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think we're inspired every day by Robbie just because. He has a totally unique perspective on everything in life, and you know it's nice to you know sort of stand in his shoes once in a while and see how the world through his eyes. So I think his father was amazed by him, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, his parents are wonderful, yeah. and that we love that they just like allow him to be who he is, and you know their whole attic was turned into basically a, a playground for him to. Uh, 
break apart and put to, together computers. Like his mother just let him have the free reign of that attic, and I think they did a great job, you know, helping him become who he is. So you must give credit to the parents too. Definitely. His parents. Now, what about Kashfia, the girl from South Dakota, uh, whose parents are from Bangladesh, mm -hmm. but she was born here. Yeah. And um, how did you discover her, and why did you go to South Dakota to a school where she says that there's alcoholism, there's uh, opioid crisis going on, I think she says, right? Yeah, we chose Kashfia because she was such an anomaly in the place that she was coming from. There was, you know, no science labs, there was no science teachers willing to sponsor her project. Um, and so unlike, you know, Dr. McCullough's students, she had absolutely nobody to help her out. And uh, to the extent that she went to the head football coach, who was the only person who she could find. Coach Schmidt? Coach Schmidt, who is wonderful. Um, to sponsor her science fair project and he's just competitive and supportive and so that's the exact right personality type to be. <laughs> but you have to give credit to him because uh, I think she was looking for some structure and f for that spirit of competitiveness, the sports, and her school had a very good sports team. No, no. <laughs> they, they, they weren't even a good sports team. That's they the funny cared thing. a lot about sports but they lost every single game that they played while we were there. Uh, how sad did you feel that nobody knew who she was and what she had accomplished in her school? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, when, when Kashvia saw the film for the first time, I think it, she felt some sort of validation because she, she would always tell her parents that nobody knows who she is, and I think her parents didn't believe her, and then we have that scene where Christina goes around asking everybody uh, if they knew who Kashvia is. But I think, you know, it's uh, emblematic of just the, you know, the priority that we we place on science. Sports is more important than Yeah, people. right. And and I love sports and sports is great, but you know, uh, when you have a student who is excelling at this level in science fairs, certainly that's you know, warrants some some recognition. Um, and it's just, you know, it's, it's sad and discouraging that, you know, she never got that kind of recognition from the school. Um, but Kashvia is also, you know, another case of just getting lucky. You know, we met mm -hmm. her the same year we met Robbie on the scouting trip. Mm -hmm. um, and if you know Kashvia, she's, you know, sort of quiet and um, she's determined. Not a, yes, quietly determined, uh, but she's not a big personality or anything, but we saw something in her when we met her that we just fell in love with and, um, you know, I think in the follow-up call that Christina made when she found out that, you know, her mentor was the varsity football coach, we were like, oh man, this Gotta is a great go. story. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go. Yeah, and, and, and I think the fact that she's out there alone fighting this very quiet fight of, you know, she's one of the only people who wears hijab in her town. She's the only um, Bangladeshi, the only science fair girl. And she's, she's out there alone, but she's very determined to do what she wants to do, and she's doing it very well. And, you know, you find out that she gets into Harvard, so she, where she's starting very soon. And so I think she'll be... Um, she gets she's into Robert. Harvard. Yeah, she she's gets totally into Harvard, totally but right. Robbie right. can't get anywhere. Yeah, right. Right. That's the irony that yeah. your film points out. That yeah. These are these nine kids, all with a passion for science, and they've made it to the final right. round. Yeah. Yeah. And yet there are cases where they can't go to college. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, the one in Brazil, the two students in Brazil, that was very interesting because they were tackling something that was kind of current, I think, three, four years of the Zika virus. Yeah. Why did you go to Brazil? How did you discover them? Well, I interviewed all of the um, all of the kids who qualified from Brazil. It was like twenty something kids. Did you want to go to Brazil because you speak Portuguese? <laughs> <laughs> That's part uh, of it. it was part of it for sure. I mean, I think you know when we were scout on the scouting trip to um, ISEP in two thousand sixteen, uh, there was one delegation that was louder and prouder than any other delegation that was Brazilians. They were just really loud. They were really fun. Uh, and so when we wanted to capture the sort of international sense of uh, and scope of the of ISEP, we definitely, you know, targeted Brazil as one of the places we'd like to go. And so then Christina. So, so we talked to all of them and uh, actually they're the only ones who didn't speak English, which is most... But they ended up speaking. I. I Yes. That's right. During the science fair, they spoke in English. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, but when we met them, they didn't speak any English. And they oh, you're saying that they didn't know English and they learned English before they went to yeah, the Yeah, yes. they learned to deliver their uh, presentation in English. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what determination, huh? Yeah, but they're incredible. But we were struck by their story. They were from, you know, the poorest of these of the places that all the kids from the science fair, from Brazil were from. 
Um, and they also had this project about Zika, which was incredibly important in their community. Um, their region of Brazil was the hardest hit by the Zika virus, and so they, there was something about this, these two kids who were taking on the issues that were so pressing in their hometown and not waiting for adults to fix them and using the internet to research. And, you know, they have very few resources out there, but they've done amazing research. And, and also, the Milena's energy is just, you know, captivating. She yeah. is just an incredible young woman and fun to be around. And so I think her energy really spoke to us, too. So. Spoke to the camera. Spoke yeah. to the camera. <laughs> okay, so the, the quietest of them all probably was Evil. Yeah. From Germany. Mm -hmm. And he had the most interesting project. So this was a very interesting film and like I said, very inspiring because it shows you how there's still um, a love for science yeah. in certain pockets. And, yeah. and you've chosen uneven pockets like right. South Dakota, Brazil. Um, the, the student that you feature, her mother's a maid, her father is a farmhand. So it's not like she comes from this very rich background. Mm -hmm. Right. You know? Exactly. Uh, so it shows that uh, if you're interested, nothing can stop you. Even somebody like Robbie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Companies recognize his potential. Definitely. And that's why they got him. Definitely. But what, a sad statistic, and I say the reason sad is you mentioned that seven million kids around the world participate in science fairs. But we are a world of over seven billion. Yeah. Drop in the bucket. <laughs> it's not even a drop in the yeah. bucket, right? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think, you know, science fairs take some resources to put together, um, and those resources are uh, becoming more scarce. Um, even here in the U.S., um, a lot of regional science fairs have lost their funding. Um, even Intel is looking, I mean, uh, ICEF is looking for uh, new funders because Intel is um, giving up their sponsorship of the, uh, of the event. Um, that I, I was going to bring that up <laughs> because yeah. I think a few months ago they announced that they were going to... Yeah. yeah. Why? So Why are they giving up? You know, it's. Uh, I don't think we, there's a clear answer on that, but I think in general, you know, our film comes out at a time that maybe science fairs are seen as uh, not as popular as they once were. One of our hopes for the film, for make, making the film, was that it would both in, inspire kids to get involved in science fair and to excite kids and to show them that it's actually very cool science fair. And <laughs> well, some of us think it's very cool. Um, <laughs> And then to get adults to realize what the importance of this is for different, and what it means to different kids and, and how it fosters different kinds of minds. And, and for me, it was very important. I mean, I wasn't terribly interested in school when I competed, but science fair was my way of ex you know, exploring the one thing that I was really interested in at that, at that moment, what? which was sociology and conformity. Um, and, and I think it teaches you to teach yourself, which is, super important. And so, yeah, we hope that it will come out at a time where adults will think, hmm, well, maybe science fair is more important than we thought it was. And, you know, a lot of science fairs are being cut, like Darren said. It's, it's, um, it's very sad. Is it up to the adults or is it up to the school or the state? I mean, where does, uh, uh, who makes decisions to foster uh, these kinds of fairs? Yeah, I mean, like... Is it a community level? Is it a I mean, I think, the, you know, Dr. McCullough is a shining example of how people at a local level are doing amazing things. And we have a few people, you know, represented uh, in Skip Zwanzig from DuPont Manual is another one. Um, and even Coach Schmidt at uh, Brookings, you know, there are just people that have um, really stepped up when it comes to sort of being mentors for kids in science. Uh, but I think we, we the problem is that as a nation, you know, some of our leadership is not doing the best job of setting an example for kids of, um, you know, encouraging them to, to pursue science, especially when you, uh, you know, basically <laughs> are anti-science or you're, you're, you know, undermining uh, scientific research and uh, at, at a national level. Uh, so I think those messages that you send to kids that, you know, science is going to be undermined and doubted and uh, not celebrated and um, is, is, is a powerful message. and. You know, hopefully this film uh, makes some changes because I think uh, science is, or 
we're all here because of science. We're all enjoying our prosperity because of science. And I think, it, and I think at every level there is room to uh, improve. I think from the parents to principals to local governments and you know local science fairs really need support. That's the area that I'm most concerned about is uh, is local science fairs are you know have, don't have very much funding. Um, and, but at every level, I think there's there's a lot of room for improvement. But it, yes, the top could also help too. Yeah. Our president could also uh, help. <laughs> My final question is: um, What do you make of this anti-science movement in the 21st century? It's very sad to us. Well, to me personally, it's very sad and troubling. Um, it's definitely part of the reason we made this film. Um, but that's not what drew you to the film in the first place, that there was an anti-science movement. Well, you know, I, I would say it made it made it feel like it was the right time for the movie. It's something we've always been interested in, but I think now is the right time to be celebrating kids who are doing science and uh, the next generation who's trying to, um, you know, to, to do science. And so um, that was definitely part of, the for me, the reason that this was the right time to do it. Yeah, I mean, I think we really want to celebrate the kids who are, you know, taking on the challenges and stepping up and taking up the mantle of science at a time when, you know, the national, our national leaders are, you know, sitting around and twiddling their thumbs in the face of some of these challenges or downright downplaying or or downplaying mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the science. Uh, the, the threats that come from things like global warming and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, I think it was important to showcase kids doing inspiring things and, um, yeah, and I think if we start doubting science and we don't support science, it's, uh, it's our, at our, the risk of our own peril. So, yeah, um, yeah science is great. <laughs> Thank you, because your film, your film won the uh, Audience Award at the Sundance Film Festival 2018. That must have been a huge boost. <laughs> crazy. It was crazy. Yeah. Just no, getting no, in. No one was more shocked than us. Yeah. <laughs> so it's recognition to your dweebness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the coolest I've ever been. <laughs> You've been cool. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're, you're now in a Robbie's cool level. <laughs> I aspire to it. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing the interview. Thank you. Thank and you so best of luck with your film. Thank, Thank you so much. so much. We'll be back again next week with another new conversation. Until then, goodbye.